Hello, human geographers. We are back at it again this evening. Tonight, we are going to examine aging populations. And we'll begin by looking at some of the metrics that we use to determine that a population is aging. Rising life expectancies is a major factor in the aging population in many countries, combined also with declining fertility rates and rising urbanization. Global life expectancy has risen from 66.5 years in the year 2000 to roughly 72 years now due to continued improvements in healthcare and sanitation, particularly in developing countries. But the life expectancy in Japan is over 87 years for women and over 81 years for men. Currently, 28% of Japan's population is over 65 years of age, an age that once signaled retirement. In fact, 13 countries currently have 20% of their population over the age of 65. But by 2050, it's expected to be over 80 countries that have that same top-heavy population pyramid. In more developed countries, about 15 to 20 percent of the population is over the age of 65, but that number will likely exceed 25 percent by 2050. In the United States, about 15 percent of the population is over the age of 65, which represents the highest percentage in our country's history, and it will increase to almost 25 percent by 2060. In fact, in 2035, there will be more Americans 65 and older than those under the age of 15. Another first for our country. Meanwhile, in less developed countries, less than 10% of the citizens are over 65, with Africa representing the lowest percentage at only 5% of the population. China, on the other hand, will increase from about 11% in 2018 to nearly 26% in 2050, representing a rapidly graying, which is to say aging, population. Overall, just under 10% of the world's population is 65 and over, but that's expected to rise to 16% by 2050. Median age is another way to evaluate aging because it divides the population into two halves, one half that is younger and one half that is older. The median age for the global population is about 30 years old. Japan and Germany represent the highest median ages at over 46 years, and Niger represents the other end of the spectrum at just over 15 years. So, is median age like our other aging statistics, a good indicator of development? Well, yes. Yes, it is. So now that we've evaluated the metrics that determine when a population is aging, let's examine some of the effects of the grain of a population. Declining fertility rates is a contributing factor to the rising proportion of the elderly. The TFR in Europe, North America, and East Asia is 1.6 babies per woman, well below the replacement rate. And when the total fertility rate is below replacement, a population declines. When there is a large elderly population, crude death rates tend to exceed birth rates also contributing to the population decline. This will have several economic effects, as we will see shortly, but it also means changing family dynamics. There will be fewer young people to care for the expanding elderly population. This may mean more elderly who are cared for by non-family members in nursing homes. This does provide an opportunity for nurses and doctors that specialize in healthcare for the elderly, but it also provides unique opportunities for social outreach, as Milan, a city in northern Italy, exhibited. In 2010, they established an elder adoption program 
where people could foster an elderly person, sharing lunch with them each day and including them in leisure activities like shopping or going to the hairdresser. The outmigration of youth also contributes to the graying of a population. We've seen this in Eastern Europe as well as in rural areas of the United States. In these areas, young people are leaving to find economic opportunities in core areas, like cities. Combine out-migration of young people with an increase in the elderly who move into nursing homes. There may be a rise in vacant properties in communities with a high proportion of the elderly. But there are some social benefits to a large elderly population. Retired grandparents can help provide childcare for their grandkids. And the elderly often share a strong attachment to their community and can help to maintain strong social networks in that community. There are also political impacts of an aging population. The percentage of people age 65 and older who vote in the United States is quite high, consistently higher than any other age group. So the political values of the elderly are often high priorities. These can include retirement programs and health care, rather than education or environmental concerns, which may not be as high of a priority. But due to rising life expectancies, the politically delicate idea of raising the retirement age has been floated. This may not be a contentious issue for young people who have decades before they're planning to retire, but for the elderly who are approaching retirement, this can be a volatile subject. But some countries like Finland, Greece, Denmark, and Italy have begun to link the retirement age to life expectancy. So an increase in life expectancy automatically increases the retirement age. And because governments collect taxes and decide how the funds will be spent, having a large elderly population could push for less tax revenue to be spent on schools and more devoted to social safety net programs, like Social Security in the United States. Continuing that thought, we will conclude tonight by talking about the economic impact of an aging population. And this is probably our most important impact. We should start by reviewing a vocabulary term from an earlier lecture. In our composition lecture, we talked about how we can examine dependency ratios in population pyramids. If you recall, the dependency ratio is the number of people under the age of 15 and over age 64 compared to the number of people who are active in the workforce. Dependency ratios allow us to examine the relationship between the labor force and the dependence in a society. Globally, the dependency ratio was 25 in 2017, but it's expected to reach 42 senior citizens for every 100 working age people by 2060. And in a country like Japan, where the workforce shrank almost 15% in the first two decades of the 21st century, and the life expectancy is in the 80s, the elderly dependency ratio is almost 50 senior citizens for every 100 workers right now. As a result, many elderly Japanese people are working into their 70s and 80s. In addition, other countries with high elderly dependency ratios are using robots for many routine tasks or easing restrictions on immigration so more foreign workers can live and work in the country. But without enough workers, there may be less economic output and the economy may slow down or shrink. The declining base in stage five countries means fewer young taxpayers. Combined with retirees paying lower income taxes, governments have less money to provide public services. And so money may be reallocated because elderly people are less likely to commit crimes nor need public schools. So public money may be spent on other areas. 
like pension programs, like Social Security in the United States, as well as health care programs like Medicare, which will feel more pressure as the elderly population expands, as may be the case in Europe. If there aren't enough funds, governments may raise taxes or benefits for retirees may be reduced. Both decisions that would be politically unpopular. And remember, retirees are very politically active. And rising elderly populations will influence changes in the workforce. There will be high demand for geriatric medical positions like nurses, doctors, and physical therapists. And it could create demand for new positions. In Sweden, for example, they've created mobile teams of home care providers who will go and visit elderly residents. And these changes can lead to different expenses. The cost of elder care in the United States, which already amounts to $400 billion, is expected to double over the next 20 years. Additionally, older customers want different products than younger customers. The elderly are less likely to purchase homes, cars, furniture, or major electronics. Instead, they spend more on healthcare related expenses like wheelchairs, walkers, reading glasses, and medication. In fact, in Japan, more adult diapers are sold than baby diapers. And on that note, we end tonight's lecture. I'll see you all back in class. Have a wonderful evening.